From a gameplay perspective, Snatcher is a run-of-the-mill adventure game from its time. That is to say, 1988. Menu-driven, you go from place to place, opening up one dialogue option, which unlocks another, which unlocks another, until story happens. But many of you just came here for the clickbait Fallout 4 title or thumbnail. So let's break into this. June 6, 1996. A mysterious explosion destroys the Chernotin research facility near Moscow. Lucifer Alpha, a powerful biological weapon under secret development there, is released into the atmosphere. Lucifer Alpha spreads throughout Eastern Europe and Eurasia, destroying 80% of the populace. Fifty years later, mankind faces its greatest crisis. The appearance of a mysterious android life form. Its purpose and origin are unknown. Is it a new form of weapon? Or perhaps an invasion from some other world? They appear during winter killing humans and infiltrating society by taking the place of their victims. Employing an artificial skin, they can sweat and even bleed. Part organic, part machine, they're almost impossible to distinguish from those they kill. As they steal their victims' bodies in order to take their place, these mysterious invaders become known as... Snatchers. Okay, so we got synths, right? Yeah, we're gonna talk about that later. Let's get back to Snatcher. So, directed by Hideo Kojima, the only major thing that this had over adventure games of its own time was that it featured a real-time combat system where you had to aim and shoot your gun. If you died, obviously, it was a game over and you had to reload your safe. And if you received no damage, then obviously the story would progress normally. But here's where it gets interesting. If you're wounded in these combat sections, they actually will provide medical assistance to you at the end of combat, and that wound will actually be mentioned in the story sections. In short, you aren't a bullet sponge that had no consequences for taking damage. Even if those consequences were just, I'm injecting you with a healing agent, and, oh, I heard you got hit, how's your wound later on? You want to talk about immersive? That's immersive. Your combat state is tied to the story. Now, there are several ports of the game. There's an original PC port featuring no voice acting at all with a steady progression amongst the ports. Things such as exposed breasts or gore were censored in later versions. Although there was no overt sexual activity in any of the versions censored or uncensored, it was just more or less eye candy. Or eye turning in the case of the ridiculous gore that took place sometimes. Now the version I most recently played and the footage here is actually from the 1994 Sega CD version. When I get it all done, there'll be a link in the video description of a live stream that I did of it. Now, a warning, I'll be spoiling the story heavily even during the live stream. So keep that in mind. The Sega CD version had voice acting in all the major story scenes. Talking character portraits instead of walls of text, as well as some smoother art style in places. Now if you didn't see that glorious intro sequence I played at the beginning, you may be asking, how does this have to do with Fallout 4 at all? Let's go over the story really quick. So, explosion at a research facility spread a plague across like 80% of Europe and Asia killing 50% of the world's total population. Areas like Russia and Central Europe were reduced to lifeless wastelands, and the rest of the world strained by the refugees pouring in from those dead areas. So it's kind of a clusterfuck, because you've got areas that are completely dead, and then you've got other areas where there's significant, significant overpopulation to where they just live in squalor. So 50 years after that fact, Humanity's rebuilt in some areas, and then machines start appearing, these androids, and they start abducting people, replacing them. Sounds a lot like Gen 3 synths from Fallout 4, right? Well, not quite. You see, there's a flaw in their artificial skin that causes them to develop cancer if they stay out in the sun too long, since they can bleed and otherwise look human. You can't just go around killing suspected synths, I mean, snatchers. Thus, as a Junker, your job is to root out the Snatchers and destroy them. Now, to say the story isn't cheesy would be an outright lie. This is a love letter from the 80s, embracing the cyberpunk Blade Runner style future, while also talking about the grim realities of a world where you can't trust anybody. Now, not to say that the story is perfect. I 
feel that very often I should have been able to go back to base and report on the stuff I learned, but no. Being a junker mostly means I'm out on my own and I need to get results before I can come back to the base. Like, it, assuming I discovered something, I need to take that discovery to its natural conclusion and finish the case before I can figure out anything back at base. If I go back to base right away, they really don't have anything new to say, which is disappointing to say the least. I found out that the home base was more or less just the tutorial area and had a lot of really good world building information, but other than that, the Junker HQ don't need to go back there. Unlike a lot of other RPGs, it doesn't add new dialogue as you go. That's really my only major negative about the game. Now, the game itself is driven by mystery. Every answer you get leads to another question. It's got some great horror elements in it as well, where you'll be talking to a normal person and suddenly they'll turn kill crazy because they're a discovered snatcher. There are other situations where you're exploring an abandoned area, the motion sensor picks up activity, the music changes, it's a holy shit moment and you know stuff is gonna go down. So in terms of atmosphere, the game's got it. Now, Hideo Kojima's influence is heavy in this title, and as a result, you'll be getting a robot partner named Metal Gear. Metal, introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mop 2. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird name. Oh, he's cute. I took his basic design and his name from the Metal Gear Menace of the late 20th century. But uh, quite unlike that Metal Gear, this one was designed for peaceful purposes. This means, of course, that the Metal Gear game is canon to the Snatcher world. This game is littered with Easter eggs as well. For example, you can see Konami's video phone number on an electronic advertising board. You can call it and get a message from them. I know these days we all just want to say fuck Konami, but back then they were pretty good. Anyway, you also have a database of every citizen in the game world, which is a plot device allowing you to learn things about them that you'll need to know to progress, you know, pick up hints and clues. You'll be able to use that database to look up Kojima and learn information about him. So all in all, I recommend giving this game a play. It's an adventure game, not a Fallout 4 style game. But this part is where I'm going to just say, I recommend it. Now let's get into the spoilers, the heavy, heavy spoilers. First of all, like Fallout 4, the character from Snatcher was put into cryosleep right before this great plague. The difference is, is that this extended sleep fucked with his memory, so he had amnesia. When he woke up, he didn't know where he came from or what happened. He didn't even know about the cryosleep. The reason they let him become a junker is because the government knew he was a former CIA agent and decided to keep tabs on him while he tried to find the truth. See, the main diverging point from this world to, say, the Fallout world, is that while Europe and Asia were almost completely annihilated, the governments in the United States and Japan survived. Anyway, having played this over 12 years ago, it didn't occur to me how closely Fallout 4 and Snatcher parallel one another. I mean, the artificial skin and blood can really sell a world where just about anyone could get wounded and you wouldn't even notice if they were a man or a machine. This really hits home the failings of Fallout 4. Because at the end of the day, when they handled this amazing storytelling tool, the most compelling thing that you could do in Fallout 4 was to wander around the wasteland and explore. The synths were almost an afterthought. I mean, the synths in Fallout 4 who did replace people actually believed there were those people, subverting the entire dread that comes over you in Snatcher when the person you're having a casual conversation with realizes you just found evidence against them. So that person you were talking to suddenly shouts, DIE JUNKER, and comes after you. If you played Skyrim at all, there was this really neat old woman you met in the wilderness near Riverwood. If you went into her basement, you found evidence that she was a witch and she was going to form a proper coven like they did in the Reach. When you exit the basement, she starts attacking with fireballs and stuff. That's the closest thing I remember them doing in the Skyrim slash Fallout 4 era. And it was a good little piece of storytelling. Well, that kind of theming it centers all around the Snatchers. 
where they're trying to pass themselves off as human, but they aren't human. And they know they aren't human. But I think the biggest sucker punch when I think back to Fallout 4 was the Institute itself. Everybody knew about it. Yeah, the, the doctor from Fallout 3 wasn't exactly subtle about keeping the Institute secret. He tells you about, In the sealed environment of the Institute, we develop all kinds of technology. But the fact is, is that since we're well known, and everyone knew the Institute was taking people with them, that's something Snatcher did really well. Nobody knew about the secret lab that was developing the Snatchers until toward the end of the game. And, and this lab, which was building Snatchers, turned out to be relevant to your character's past. In Snatcher, your character is mostly recovered from the shock of being thrust into this new world. He did that off screen in the prologue before the game even really started. Now, he's doing the job of a junker while at the same time trying to find the cause of all this as well as uh, ruminating on his lost memories and how he could possibly get them back. While Fallout 4 had your main character yelling, SEAN! SEAN! Snatcher had your character dealing with the immediate problems, while an overarching plot of your character's lost memories was kind of stewing in the background. Big spoilers? Your former colleague got unfrozen before you and started building the Snatchers to continue the project. All the pre-crisis tech that was being built in Russia, these extreme innovations, well, Russia's destroyed now. All those pre-crisis innovations are now under this one man's command. He has an army of artificial followers. Not a son, but a scientist you worked with in the past. Oh, and he's an old man now because he woke up from cryosleep and he left you inside. Eventually, you got woken up anyway, but the extended sleep messed up your memories. You aren't the predestined savior of the world suddenly adorned with power armor and a minigun, but through hard work and determination, you can get to the truth and put an end to the crisis anyway. To sum it up, the gameplay of Snatcher is extremely entertaining. The story at times makes leaps of logic where characters who are allied to you will suddenly accept the things you say a little too easily. And there are other times where the game is clearly testing your ability to remember things to a kind of absurd degree. But aside from these very, very few complaints, I love Snatcher and I recommend it to everyone. It's not an open world exploration sandbox like Fallout 4 was. It's a damned menu-driven adventure game. But you know what? Fallout 4 could have learned from the theming, characterization, and oh my goodness, the events. The horror events, the terror that certain scenes leave where you have no idea what's going to happen. Snatcher leaves Fallout 4 an anticlimactic mess of a story that couldn't properly commit to one theme or another because it tried to be everything. Whereas Snatcher knew exactly what it was and embraced it. Good work, Hideo Kojima, and the whole team who made Snatcher. The English voice acting was... Nyeh. But other than that, a highly recommended retro treasure. Thank you all for watching. Check the social media links for more content, and I will see you all next time.